Hello and welcome to the CSN 3M Mindset Monday podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Wade, with Case Specific Nutrition. On this channel, we focus on the three M's, mindsets, myth-busting, and mentoring, all as they pertain to health and nutrition. Today's episode is a very special episode. I'm calling it the COVID-19 episode. Um, I'm recording this on April 9th, which marks us being um, approximately four weeks, at least here in Pittsburgh. We are four weeks into our stay-at-home orders, um, and I've been working virtually along with my uh, my team, my dietitians. We've all been working virtually since um, March 16th, so we are now, I guess, in our fourth week of virtual consulting. Um, and I feel so grateful that I've been able to, um, you know, work with people and meet with my clients and share perspectives during a crazy time like this. This is a very unique time in history. Um, you know, all of our lives have been changed dramatically, some in more intense ways than others. Um, you know, and with that comes a change in habits and a change in day-to-day -day function. So I wanted to take a little bit of time today and share some of the just, um, you know, some simple thoughts and observations that, um, you know, I think I've been seeing a lot of people, um, you know, benefit from um, as I've been working with them week to week as we've been, um, you know, settling into what I've been calling the quarantine routine. And something to acknowledge is we aren't sure how long you know, no one really knows for certain how long things are going to be different. And that is scary. Um, you know, this, this shutdown that we're currently in is likely the most intense version of the shutdown that we are going to see. Uh, but how long it's extended is unknown. And then once we start to scale back into normalcy, we know that that's not going to be a light switch. There's no world that we can just you know, go from all sheltering at home to being, um, you know, at a, at a football game with 70,000 other people the next day, there has to be a gradual reintroduction of interactions in a one-on-one -on -one fashion, and then in small group fashion, and then in moderate group fashion. And that really could take, um, you know, months. And so with that in mind, I've been working with people on um, what we've been calling our quarantine routine, which is acknowledging that when life throws us a curveball that lasts two weeks and it disrupts our normal flow of you know when we um, you know when we eat our meals and when we're dropping our kids off where um, and you know what time we're doing this, oftentimes it's you know easier to acknowledge oh, it's just the short term we're going to do the best we can with it. Um, but we're now at a point where we're four weeks in, and if we've been holding our breath or forcing scenarios in a temporary way, it's probably really starting to burn you out. It's probably really starting to take a toll, which means now sleep is getting effective and our, are affected and our sleep wake cycle is getting thrown off. Um, our energy and our mood is being affected. And obviously as a result, our relationships are being impacted. Our motivation is being impacted. And that's the worst thing that this could do to us um, you know, as a nation is really, really, um, in addition to spreading the illness and hurting us, in addition to that, really deflating our sense of purpose and motivation, um, you know, in life. And so what I've been working with people on is sort of going through what we call the transition phase, which is, you know, acknowledging what's happening, um, you know, seeing how it's affecting your current reality. And then once the you know, sort of dust settles, sort of seeing where your reality is, right? What's the new setup? Is is work now taking place at the dining room? And are there three kids at the dining room table doing online schooling with you? Um, you know, is work on hold? And now all of a sudden you're left with a great deal of free time um, and you're not quite sure what to do with it because you've already cleaned your apartment or your house about 13 times. We can see where all of a sudden day-to-day -day routines, day-to-day -day habits, day-to-day -day intentions have changed. And so when, when I work with people on that, I think that's sort of the first phase is that transition, is that observation of what the new reality is. And then from there, I've been working with people on the calibration, which is trying to sort of identify um, you know, both the good and the not so good of the current routine, right? What are the, what are the things that are actually positive? I know for me, um, I've been eating dinner at a more normal dinner time and I've actually been eating dinner with my wife sometimes, which that's a wonderful thing. Um, I've been getting more dog walks in and overall I can see there's been some benefits to my schedule. Um, you know, the drawback for me is the virtual side of counseling. Um, while it's engaging and it's effective, it also has me staring at a computer screen 12 hours 
hours a day, where in my office, while I have a computer in front of me, I'm not glued to that screen. Um, and so I notice my eyes and my brain fatiguing a little bit faster. I don't have the same energy that um, you know I, I normally do. And so we can see where there's sort of give and take uh, for all people. And so I think the first thing we can do is try and outline that balance, right? What are the things in this current reality that are good? Um, and we want to bookmark those because as things change and start to gradually shift back to our, our more normal interactive lives, we might want to try and keep some of those things. For example, I might want to start coming home for dinner a couple nights a week um, or starting a little later in the day a couple days a week so that I can have a dog walk, just as two easy examples. Um, and then from there, we want to identify the components that are, you know, throwing us off a little bit, right? The things that are, are setting us up to maybe not feel our best. And then start to try and identify some positive interventions or alternatives and sort of optimize and calibrate, you know, that reality. And so, you know, if, I think a lot of people have been feeling... Um, a little detached from their day-to-day -day purposes. Um, and, you know, because our schedules, I know I work with a lot of teachers, right? And they're a perfect example. Their normal life is up early, at school, on their feet, going a million miles an hour um, all day. They have meals that are sort of built into their day. Um, they have probably one of the most structured schedules and they also have a lot of activity built into that structure. Um, and what we want to observe there is they're now at home sitting in front of a computer and they don't have set meal times. And so we could see where their normal day-to-day -day routine would be pretty thrown off. Um, and so that's an example of a person where we want to take a look at it and observe what could be positive about being home, right? Is there a chance to do something with the family or with the kids? Um, you know, is there something that we could be using to have some extra time in nature um, or be more active in some way? Is there improvements in sleep that can be happening? Um, and sometimes it actually helps to write it out and actually outline it, to actually take some time to visualize what we call a template schedule, right? What's what's going to be the normal wake up time in this in this quarantine routine, and what you know that wake up time representing a time where you're well rested, and then how are you going to start your day? What's going to be the thing that wakes you up and you know gives you the mental boost that you want to dive into your day with? Um, I'm a big fan of Darren Hardy, and he always talks about his vital functions, which are what are the you know 90 minute blocks in the day today or tomorrow that you're going to really put in and focus in and you're not going to let anything else distract you. Today, I have one of my 90 minute blocks is my podcast recording. Um, and then I have a meeting with one of my team members. That's my other, my other jam session, as he calls them, where I'm focusing in. And those two 90 minute sessions are the times when I turn my phone over, I turn off my email, I, I block myself out from all the distractions and I really focus well on those key things. Because when I walk away from those, those are what give me feelings of accomplishment. They're what really make me feel useful. They're what give me purpose. And so we want to make sure we're outlining, you know, what are our purposeful um, focuses for each day? And it's really good to have those ahead of time. You know, on a Sunday, look at the week ahead and take some time to look at when you want to be, um, you know, what, what you want to be doing each day. And I've been give, using, you know, cleaning as an example. If you want spring cleaning to be the project while you're at home and not working, the first thing you should do is make a list of every spring cleaning project that you have and ideally then break them up into two hour um, segments, right? So cleaning out this drawer, organizing these cupboards or cleaning this closet, you know, really breaking down, even if you have a room that has multiple projects within it, breaking it down into individual projects, it should take two hours and then giving yourself one or two blocks throughout the day, a morning one and an afternoon one that gives you a chance to really focus in and accomplish those tasks. And you'll start to notice that if you project out your week a little bit, not saying scheduling it to the minute, but projecting it out and having a good feeling of what you're going to do each day. And then the day before that, you project your day ahead and you wake up feeling purpose and intention and like you have a plan, you're going to have accomplishment. You're going to have value. You're going to have purpose. And that really does help our brain. Um, from that, we then can see we now have a good sleep routine, a good wake routine. We've got some purposeful time each day, which gives us that feeling of accomplishment. Um, and then we want to make sure we're outlining, you know, the other important things, our self-care time, right? Are we, are we making enough time to actually do our morning routines and do our showers and, you know, do the things that we need to do to feel the best about us? Um, you know, our kids' routines, can we use some extra time that we might have now to make some breakfasts and have breakfast as a family? These all have opportunities to become new habits, new routines that can feel good in our day. Um, 
And then with that, the food becomes a really interesting observation. I've seen the spectrum. Um, I've seen people that are finding this as an awesome opportunity because they're home more, so they're now cooking themselves a breakfast, making themselves a lunch, and making a dinner each day. Um, and they feel great about it, right? There's more time that the food is positive, the food is intentional, the food is delicious. And that's a wonderful thing. Um, I've, also, I've also been talking with people that have been finding themselves using food as the thing that they go and graze or snack on every hour on the hour when they want a distraction from their work. And because they can't talk to a coworker or their normal walk to the car or their normal you know, interruptions in the day don't exist, they start to find themselves snacking constantly and then they're not actually hungry for meals and so then they end up kind of grazing through meals and then their body finds themselves feeling kind of sick or nauseous or even a little bit off. And so Food is uh, across the spectrum. We can see that this is a chance to, as we build our our you know projected schedule out, our things each day that are setting us up to feel great, food is an important part of it. We want to be making time each day to eat good food. We want to be making sure that we are you know um, having some time each day to prepare food or plan or have an idea of what we're going to eat. Um, and you know there's definitely more access to food, and that means there's going to be more variety, um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I know for me personally, one of the things that I've been um, I've been playing around with is I've been calling um, you know traditional foods that people refer to as snacks. I've refer I've been considering them um, optional side dishes. So for example, chips are something that I know personally. If I sit down in the afternoon to eat chips on their own, they're they're a lonely food for me, and I definitely am somebody that eats a lot of chips. Um, and it would make sense. They're not particularly filling. Um, their purpose is not to be filling. Their purpose is to be tasty. Um, and so if you eat them by themselves, chances are you're not going to feel full from them. And in the spirit of trying to enjoy food and also have good hunger and fullness cues, I've been call, calling chips a side dish. Um, and so throughout the week, if I want to have some chips, I've been including them as a part of my lunch, right? I'll have a sandwich or a wrap and have some chips and then have a banana and peanut butter. And now the chips can be a crunchy and salty and tasty component of a meal that also gives me satisfaction and satiety. Um, and so I think it can be helpful to observe your schedule, observe your daily tendencies, observe your needs, and then from there, also observe your hunger, observe when you think food is going to fit into your day, um, and then allow those foods, and because you're home, you're going to have more variety, allow that variety to fit into those days, right, into those meals. Um, and, you know, if we can sweep up our snacks and grazing and random stuff and put them in meals so that we can actually feel, um, you know, satisfied and full what you might notice is that your energy, your excitement of food, and your overall balance and routine is in a really good place. This is not a time for us to be obsessing and trying to create perfection. This is a time for us to be learning. This is a time for us to be growing. Each week, we're going to get better and better. Each week is a chance for us to get better at the school thing with our kids and get better at the work thing from our dining room tables and get better at the meals that taste good um, that we had to create from our pantries. This is a really good time for us to find all of those positives um, and progress, right? This isn't a time for perfection, but continued growth. And the mindset that comes with that can be very positive. And the hope is that on the other side of this, we find ourselves in a place where, where, where we have some positive habits that we really like and maybe some components of our quarantine routine that we want to keep and we want to protect and put back into our normal life that might have been spread too thin and overly stressed. I hope today's topic was an interesting one. I wish all of you health and wellness and safety. Thank you again for listening. Uh, please subscribe to our channel and share your favorite social media. And don't forget to uh, hashtag spread the health and tag a loved one. Um, you can find more case-specific nutrition content at casespecificnutrition.com and on all social media at casespecificnutrition. Uh, we are thinking of you here and um, you know th thoughts and prayers to all families out there. And we will be back next week with another CSN 3M mindset Monday.